Hello, everyone. I hope uh, you're all, it looks like the room is just now letting everyone in. Sorry for any weirdness or delays. We're just using Zoom webinar for the first time. So please bear with us as we get used to it. Uh, it's a little bit different. I see all the attendees piling in now. So I will just ramble while we wait for everyone to, to get into the room. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. We're here today. We're going to have Jeff Carlson present for us. I'm going to, like I said, just talk until a few of you get, a few more of you get into the room and are ready to go. Um, to let you know a little bit about this webinar, we have Jeff Carlson here today. He's going to tell us about using layers and masks in Luminar. And then we also have the Luminar team here. So as you have any questions about the Luminar program or a process, you can go ahead and ask them in the chat. And then the Luminar team will get back to you to answer that specific question for you. Jeff will also answer questions at the end. So just submit your questions as you have them and we'll keep track of them and try to get you as many answers as we can. So I see a lot of you are still entering the room. If you want to go ahead in the chat and tell us where you're, where you're tuning in from, we like to see where, where people are coming from. Uh, it kind of looks like we've reached a, a stagnant point. There's not so many people entering the room now. So I think I'll just go over what I said again <laughs> one more time and then we can get started, um, which is today we have Jeff Carlson, who's going to talk to us about using layers and masks in Luminar 4. I think it's gonna be really great based on what we've seen from Jeff before. And then we also have uh, some people from the Luminar team here in the chat that'll be fielding questions that you may have. So as you have your questions, go ahead and type them into the chat and then either the Luminar team or Jeff will answer them for you at the end. Just go ahead and submit your questions as you have them. I wanna let everyone know if you have any kind of technical errors or glitches, just Hold tight, we do have a, we are recording this and we will have a replay that will be emailed to you tomorrow. Um, you will also receive in your email, you should have got it in your registration email for this, is a coupon code to receive Jeff's, uh, the photographer's guide to Luminar 4 at a discount. So I'll post that uh, coupon code in the chat as well. That's also in your registration email and the email you'll receive tomorrow with the replay. So since everybody came here to see Jeff and not me, it uh, looks like we have a good number of people here ready to get started. I will go ahead and turn this over to you, Jeff. Hello. Let's make sure. Aha. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, I am so happy that you're here. Uh, the last time we did a webinar, uh, I basically covered, you know, kind of the basics of Luminar, what it does, uh, a lot of emphasis on the AI uh, capabilities of it, which are very, very cool. But then I got a lot of feedback from people saying, hey, but what about some of the more uh, advanced things? Uh, how do I use layers? How do, how do I use masks? And so that's, what, that's how this came about. Um, so today I'm gonna talk about layers and masks. Um, but first of all, I just have to show off, and I, I saw someone mention this in, in the, um, uh, in the text about where are the printed books, this is what it looks like. And uh, I, you know, am, am just totally showing off, uh, not just because my publisher is here, but because, um, you know, it's, it's a real book and it is beautiful. And so um, it's, it's there, it's available. You can get a discount code. Um, it's, it's, it turned out great. I'm really excited about it. Um, I've written a lot of books and uh, it's, it's kind of funny that, you know, getting that in the mail was like a giddy thing, like, ah, oh, the book is here. Okay. Um, a, a couple of quick notes. Um, so I'm going to work with four images today. And one thing that we're going to try uh, after I do something with an image, I'll probably pause for some questions. Um, after I share my screen, I don't think I can see the chat. So I will rely on uh, uh, Mercedes and um, uh, Luminar and the, the, the Skylum team um, to kind of feed some of those to me. Um, that way, you know, it just doesn't look like I'm, you know, looking over and scrolling and everybody wait while I read and read and read. So, um, yeah. So, like I said, Luminar uh, is is great for uh, you know, people who have no experience shooting, uh, sorry, no experience editing photos. Um, you know, if you've, if you've used Luminar 
and you've used like the AI enhanced tools, uh, there are some pictures where you can just drag that slider up and you're golden and it's great. Um, it's also good for people who have done photo editing in the past and they don't want to get complicated. However, it also has depth. And that's what I really love about it. And really one of the reasons why we decided to write a book about it, because it, it can do layers, it can do masks. Um, and as you'll see, uh, Luminar takes kind of a slightly different approach to how it handles those things. Uh, if you're familiar with layers in Photoshop or you know, some other applications, uh, some of this will sound familiar to you, but you might also find yourself going, oh, well, that would be really handy. And that's something that Photoshop doesn't do by itself. So anyway, um, here we go. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now. And hopefully you can all see this. Um, if not, Mercedes chime up and say, <laughs> hey, dummy. Um, we okay. Can see it. So far, so good. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you very much. Um, all right. So let's talk about just really quickly, if you're not familiar with layers at all, uh, let's talk about what that means. So I'm going to take this picture here. Um, this is something that I've done some editing on already. Um, and Let's just first of all look at how Luminar handles edits. Um, you can do all sorts of editing with no layers at all. So, you know, um, if you have no interest in layers and you're just here because it sounded like an interesting topic, uh, that's totally fine. So if you look here, um, excuse me, uh, over at the, the uh, editing panel here, um, I've made some edits. So these are all the tools that um, are in the essentials group here. Uh, the ones that are, are uh, white instead of gray mean that I have applied edits to that. So for example, um, I added some AI accent. Uh, I added some structure, that sort of thing. Uh, I added a, a vignette. And you know, if I wanted to, I could make that change right here. Everything is basically uh, all together in one big pack of editing. And there, there are different uh, groups. And so there's like, there are creative tools, there are portrait tools, etc. Now, that's great. Um, what's, what I love about this aspect is you can, you know, apply all these different edits and not have to worry about, say, layers. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, a, a lot of organization. But let's say um, you want to try a variation, right? Like, I kind of like this, but I have another idea for it. And maybe I want to just try that idea. So if I stuck to this, this um, setup right here, like, let's say I wanted to, you know, like make a more dramatic vignette and I wanted to uh, maybe apply a glow effect, right? So then I'm sort of bouncing around all the tools and changing them. And I could say to myself, well, you know what? It was a neat idea, but it didn't work out. And if I wanted to go back to this part, I would either have to go back to the tools and, uh, you know, reset everything to what it was. And, you know, you can pretty much bet that I didn't actually write that down because I'm using a computer. Why should I write anything down? Um, or I could go down here in the bottom right. There's a history panel, which is really great. But, you know, maybe I did, you know, seven, eight, 15 different things. And I don't exactly remember where that was. So this is where layers come in. A layer basically lets you, uh, you know, make edits separate from, from what this is basically our base layer. This is our image. So if you think of this as, as one, uh, one level, and then you can build on top of that. Now, uh, the way we get to this is through the layers panel, which is up here in the upper right. And uh, what you can see here is just like, this is our image right here. Um, so Luminar has a few different layer types. The one I'm gonna talk about mostly is an adjustment layer. So again, let's say I wanna take this in, in an interesting direction, but I don't wanna uh, ruin all of the, the edits that I've made so far. 
So I'm gonna click the Create Layer button, and I'm gonna say New Adjustment Layer. There are also image layers and stamped layers, which we'll get to a little later. And an adjustment layer, if you notice, I've, I've created a new layer. Um, all of my tools here turned off. And you might think, oh, it just ruined everything. Like, like what happened to my edits? But of course, as you're looking at the photo, the edits are all still there. So what an adjustment layer does is basically let you reuse any of your tools, but just on that layer. So for example, let's say I wanna go crazy with a vignette, right? Like, like the, vignette, the vignette that was there was not really what I had in mind. Um, so like I want something really moody, right? And maybe I want to uh, click choose subject and I wanna make sure that the vignette is more focused right around here. Okay. Um, let's say I want to, you know, like I said, go to uh, apply a glow to it, like, like like soft focus. Uh, maybe I've already had a couple of these, uh, and so everything has that little that wonderful glow. Um, now, what this has done is those two edits are now just on that layer, and because the layer is on top of my base layer the adjustments are still going to affect everything that I've done before, but it's not, it's not changing the, the actual sliders, the actual values. And so I can look at this and I say, well, you know, that's, that's not bad. Um, you know, maybe I want to, uh, you know, see kind of before and after of, of what I had just done. So I can, I can uh, turn off that layer and that, gets us back to where we were before, I can turn it back on. Now, because I'm, you know, kind of thinking creatively, uh, maybe I want to make this black and white. Maybe this should really be black and white. Now, what I could easily do is go to the uh, Essentials panel I can go to my black and white conversion. I can convert it to black and white. But one of the advantages of layers is it gives you a bit of organization as you're working. Right. So in this case, I want to try a black and white, but I really want it to be separate from from what I had just done. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And as far as I know, um, in, in talking with the Skylum folks, um, there are no limits as to how many layers you have. It, it really just kind of depends on your, your computer's memory and processing power. Um, I doubt that you would, you know, go super crazy and have tens or hundreds, maybe you would. Um, but, you know, this is kind of a, a, a typical layers workflow for me. Okay, so now I'm on adjustment layer two. And I'm going to go to my black and white conversion. And, uh, you know, that's, that's not bad. I, I, I kind of like that. But then I realize I don't, really want to go with that glow. And uh, I liked the original vignette. In fact, I kind of like the original edit, but I just want to make it black and white. Now, one way I could do that is go and undo the work that I've done, but I don't really want to do that. I can go back up to my layers and say, you know what? I know that on this adjustment layer one, where I added the glow and I added the super strong vignette, I can just turn that off. And what happens now is because the adjustment layer two is above the base layer, it's affecting everything below it. And by turning off that adjustment layer one, I have the ability to just very quickly go back to my original. So from an organizational standpoint, it becomes really helpful. I will often create a new adjustment layer, say just for portrait edits. Uh, if, if I'm working on uh, a portrait of someone and, and that, you know, like, like there's no structural reason for me to do that, but it makes it clear in my mind. I'll show an example of that a little bit later. Um, and then as we will also get to later, um, another reason for doing layers is to deal with uh, masks and blend modes, <clears throat> excuse me, which um, again, gives you more flexibility when you're working on, on, on layers like this. So 
that's this image. Do we want to jump in with any any questions? Uh, oh, yes. Hey, hey, hey Jeff. I, yeah. Hey, yeah, Jeff. Go I, ahead. I've got a couple of questions here. Uh, so there was a question about how to uh, rename a layer, which I thought yes. could be a neat uh, uh, softball for you. <laughs> yes. Um, in fact, uh, um, so this little this little action button uh, to the right of the layer name um, gives you a bunch of different options, such as deleting, um, duplicating, etc. And you can say rename layer. So let me call this crazy moody glow. And and uh, renaming layers especially when you get more than like two or three becomes really important because that way, uh, you know, it, it helps you organize it. And, and I know exactly, oh, right, this is the crazy moody glow. Uh, this was my black and white layer, you know, black, BW. Um, and again, helps you just, just work quickly. That, that's great. Um, you may not get to it uh, until the next image, but uh, we also had a request to show how to apply a mask in a specific area. And, yes. um, and w one that's a little bit more advanced and, and I know that, that you know how to do this. Uh, there was a question about layering two photos and how to see them both. Uh, so just put that in the back of your mind uh, okay. for upcoming images. Okay. Um, whoever was asking these questions, I appreciate it because those are right on my outline. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for predicting, uh, those, those issues. Um, okay. So let's, Let's, uh, I'm going to turn off black and white because I, I do like the color of this. Actually, I'm just going to turn both of these off for right now. Um, and, and of course, I should also mention if, you know, you're like, wow, black and white just didn't work at all. You can just delete the layer and it goes away. And again, uh, because Luminar is non-destructive, this is not affecting your base image in any way. Uh, you know, I haven't messed up any of the, the edits on my crazy moody glow layer. Um, you know, everything is nicely separated and, and uh, very respectful of, of the edits that you're going to be making. Okay, so let's go back to our grid view. And um, that was like a real quick rush over, um, you know, how, how layers work. Um, but that was also with a a image that I had already done some editing with. So let's let's just do like a, a soup to nuts edit from scratch kind of image. All right, so this image here, this is a raw image. Uh, the only thing I've done to it is crop it a little bit to, to recompose. And um, one of the things that, that I like to do, when, and actually as you do more editing, you find yourself doing this automatically, is you take a look at an image and pause for a moment and like, like figure out what it needs. So I like this image a lot. Um, I like the expression on her face. Uh, this was a, a rare snowy, this may have been the only day, one of the only days it snowed in Seattle this year. Um, but I can also immediately see some issues that I wanna work with. Um, it's a little, um, it's a little muted. Uh, it, I, I, I was sort of hoping for kind of a more, you know, magical sort of bright day, um, or bright look about it, excuse me. Um, her face is a little dark. Her eyes are definitely dark. I would like to get some pop out of there. And um, of course we have this wonderful thing, uh, you know, a bit of tree bit leaves. I don't even know what that is. Uh, got caught on her, on her uh, hat. And of course, when you look at this, like that's, probably the second thing that you, that you, that your eyes go to. So oh, what can we do about this? Well, we can do a lot about a lot with this. So that's great. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, since we're still in our layers panel, you can see we're here in the, um, the base image. So um, I'm going to just make an adjustment to that base image. And I'm just going to, uh, I'm looking here at my notes. Um, I'm just gonna do AI enhance and increase that a little bit. Um, with Luminar especially, I, I will almost always go to AI enhance and just see what it does. Because sometimes, uh, you know, it'll, it'll do great things. And haha, <laughs> you probably just saw my mouse lose its connection. Okay, that's gonna be fun. All right, so um, 
AI Enhance is doing doing a lot of good stuff. Uh, I will kind of leave that about like, I don't know, 30 or so. It's, it's, it's helped a little bit. Um, one difference between uh, Luminar and Photoshop, and this isn't like a, a positive or a negative. In Photoshop, if you're familiar with layers, you will often have um, adjustment layers that are, are basically like, like one tool per adjustment layer. And if you like that style of working, if you really want to have like these things separated out, you can absolutely do that. Uh, so for example, you know, I could have a, an adjustment layer that just uses the light tool and then another one that just uses the color tool. Um, you know, if, if that sort of fits for your, your mental model of how you're editing, that's great. I'm not going to do that, <laughs> but um, what I am going to do is I'm going to make uh, a new adjustment layer. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is start working on her face first. Okay. So in fact, uh, I'll rename this and just say portrait edits. And another important thing to point out here is um, as I switch between my different groups, the name of your layer shows up right underneath the name of the group, which is really helpful because if you're on a different layer and you start working and, and it's not doing what you think it should be doing, always check right here to make sure you're on the layer that you think you are. Okay, so portrait edits. Um, we're gonna zoom in on her face a little bit or a lot. And um, we are gonna do a little bit of just AI skin enhancement. She doesn't need a whole lot, but um, you know, I find that, that Luminar's uh, algorithms for, for doing skin smoothing um, are, are great because as you can probably tell, uh, it, it, it helps skin, but it still leaves texture. Um, it doesn't become a, a big blurry mess. Um, so if I do a before and after, I'm not even sure if that's going to uh, translate through to the webinar, but uh, I'll just know that it's there. Um, we're going to do most of our work here in AI Portrait Enhancer. And um, the eyes are, are, are really the thing that, that I want to work on here. So I'm going to uh, increase the eye whitening a little bit just to, to make that pop a touch. Uh, eye enhancer, I almost always increase the eye enhancer. And again, you may not be seeing a whole lot of difference, but bear with me. Um, dark circles remover, uh, I know this is, you know, a, a, an 11-year-old. You're like, how can an 11-year-old have dark circles? We all have dark circles. And the dark circles remover, like it, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, completely eliminate it. It just kind of brings a little bit of lightness there. Um, in fact, I'm going to increase the face light just a touch. And um, it looks like her lips are a little bit uh, muted. So I'm going to just increase the lip redness just a little bit and the teeth whitening just a little bit too. Okay. So these are not, you know, huge, dramatic uh, portrait retouching, but it's, it's getting closer to, to what I was looking for. Now, uh, that's great, but her eyes are still, still too muted to me, right? So um, what I want is a little bit more color and a little bit more brightness. And this is where uh, layers and masks really, really come in. So what I'm gonna do here is go up to layers again, and I'm gonna create another new adjustment layer. Now, what's gonna happen is I'm going to make some adjustments and it, it's gonna affect the entire image and it will probably make it look terrible. And that's okay. <laughs> so um, I'm just looking at her eyes and um, I can see that, okay, I want, I want more uh, brightness in her eyes. So I'm just going to move the exposure up just a little bit. Exposure tends to be kind of a, a, a big hammer, so I, I, I don't go crazy with it. But you can see we've got already a bit more brightness there. Um, I'm going to increase the... Um, oh, and... Okay, so th that's the light portion of it. I'm going to switch to the color tools. I'm going to increase the saturation just a little bit. And again, uh, you know, you can go super crazy with this, but I'm 
I tend to be a little bit of a, a type that's like, add a little bit, see how it looks, add a little bit, see how it looks. Um, so then I'm gonna switch to the advanced settings under color. And what we're really looking for is like, like the redness here. So I'm gonna kind of make this a little darker and I'm gonna increase the saturation a little bit and I'm gonna bring up the luminance. Now, like I said, it's affecting the entire image. And once I start doing this, I might think, oh, like I'm, I'm ruining the entire thing. Um, oh, I'm gonna make one more, one more edit because they were so dark, there's just a little bit of noise in there. So I'm gonna use the denoise tool and uh, get some luminosity denoise just to, just to clean that up a little bit. Okay, so very quick before and after. So this is what uh, we started with at the very beginning. And this is what we have after making this adjustment. Now, of course, I don't want this to be on her entire face. So I'm gonna go back to the layers menu. And this is where we get into masking. Now, a real quick primer on masking is, um, if you envision like a ski mask, there is somebody uh, behind it and where the mask is, you can't see their face and where there are holes, you can see their eyes and their mouth. And uh, masking in image editing is, is really, this, uh, it's basically the same. Um, dark areas tend to be hidden, light areas tend to be uh, uh, exposed. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is, let me go up here and click edit mask, and I'm gonna use a brush mask. And what this is gonna let me do is just basically paint the area where I want all of the edits on this layer to appear. Uh, because I have increased the size of my cursor, uh, this is a little bit exaggerated. So um, when you're using a regular cursor, it's gonna, it's gonna show up uh, more accurately. But, um, all right, so now, I'm, I'm resizing my, uh, the, the size of my brush just by using the bracket keys left and right. And now I'm just gonna click to paint. Oh, look at that. Come here. I have seen this happen a couple of times. <laughs> Kevin! Um, Okay, this is an example of, hey, this worked last night. Uh, what should be happening is, when I click the brush tool and I click to paint on her eye, it should be letting me paint. And for some reason, it is currently not doing that. So what I'm going to do is... I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on there, Jeff. Me neither. Sorry about that. Um, um, you no, might no, want to try just the the portrait eye enhancer uh, for that for that particular track if you want. Well, um, don't mean to look, set you off in another direction. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm going to try one more thing. See, this only happens when uh, when you're doing a demo. So. Okay, there we go. I think it just needed me to, I don't know what happened. But if you look at as I'm painting now, all right, I'm getting some of that color right there on her, on her eyes. Um, so what, what happened there, um, aside from the glitch in my system, um, I had made all those edits and it affected the entire image. But as soon as I started painting the mask, the areas that I painted on were the areas that the, um, that, that the edits came through. And in fact, it looks like I've, I've sort of overpainted this. If I hold down the option key, that lets me uh, erase a little bit. See how that looks. It's not, it's not super exact. If you were doing this, you know, uh, on your own and not uh, demonstrating it, you'd probably spend a little bit more time doing this. 
Now, a couple things. One, uh, we can view the mask up here and see exactly where you're painting. Uh, this looks terribly evil, but I assure you it's not. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, there are controls up here for the, the softness and the opacity of the brush. It really depends on, on what you're working with. Uh, in this case, you know, I, I just wanted that circular area to be, uh, to be bright. Now, you're like, okay, well, that seemed like a lot of work uh, just to make that one little bit uh, lighter. But here's what's great about creating a mask on an adjustment layer. If I go back and say, boy, you know, I, when I was looking at that, it, it, the, the color just seems wrong, right? So I'm here on my adjustment layer. Now, any edits that I make on this adjustment layer are only going to apply to her eyes. So, you know, maybe, I think that's a little bit too bright. Maybe I, I really want it brighter, okay? Um, I really don't, but this is, a, this is an excellent way to show uh, what it does, okay? Um, and you'll notice, because I've created that mask, only those areas are, are being affected. Let me bring that down to sort of a more manageable level. So this is something, you know, I've, I've been able to, to bring a little bit of light and color to her eyes that uh, it, it was there, it was there in the image, but wasn't really there in the exposure that I shot. Okay. Um, now, uh, let's say I want to make this whole thing look a little more dreamy, right? Um, I'm going to go back to my layers panel, add a new adjustment layer. And add a little bit of that glow, because actually I think in this case, glow really works nicely. And that's nice, but I want to do, I want a little bit of structure in the background. I want a little bit of uh, other applications call this clarity. And this is, this is a very cool Luminar thing. Um, so I'm gonna increase my AI structure and you'll see in the background there, it's getting it a little bit more defined. Now the key is, if you've ever used clarity before with a person in the photo, clarity can just wreck a person because it's, it's, it's increasing the local contrast. And so suddenly somebody who might have very minor wrinkles looks like they have really deep wrinkles or bad shadows or whatever. Uh, what's nice about Luminar is it is basically using its AI to say, oh wait, there's a person there, there's a face. I recognize that, that there's a face. So I'm gonna assume that you don't want that structure applied to the face. And so if we zoom in again, you'll notice as I change the structure, her face isn't changing, which I think is just uh, very cool. Um, if you've done this sort of editing in other applications in the past, uh, masking would be your only option. So you would have to create a separate mask to basically say, don't do her face. And uh, with Luminar, basically, it's done that masking for you. You can't access that mask, but you, know, you can trust that, oh, it knows that it's doing the right thing in this situation. Okay, now, uh, we're almost done with this image, and um, it's time to get rid of this this little bit of thing on her on her hat. And this is something that, that that's very important when you're working in Luminar, uh, which is um, when you use the erase tool or the clone and stamp tool, Luminar is going to create uh, what's called a stamped layer. It's gonna basically create a new version of this edited layer so that it can uh, manipulate the pixels on it. Now, that's why I've actually left this to the end because I like to get an image edited with the colors and tones that I like and then do the sort of spot retouching that might be needed. Um, in the, uh, the Luminar 4.2 release, um, either 4.1 or 4.2, uh, they dramatically in, uh, improved the erase tool, which I love. Uh, 
So let's do that real quick. So I'm going to go here to the Canvas panel. And uh, in this case, we're just going to do Erase. And so it's going to take a second. It's going to create its own new layer. And I'll, I'll switch to that after. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see this really nicely. Uh, make my size a bit bigger. And I make it just a little bit smaller because I can be finicky. And I'm just going to paint over this section. Okay, I'm going to paint over the areas that I want to get rid of. Now it hasn't done anything yet. All it's done is it knows that that's, that's the area to work on. Um, if I want, I could click done and exit the tool and it would apply that. Uh, I don't really want to do that just yet because I want to see what it does. So I'm going to click erase. And it's going to use its smarts to fix that spot. Now, not only are the, 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 the bits gone, uh, you know, it's done a really good job of keeping the texture and the weave of the hat. Uh, it, you know, it, it looks like it's sampled a little bit right here uh, from somewhere else. And so like, it's not exactly even. Um, I think maybe if I had made like a, a larger swath, uh, that could also make a difference. Um, in fact, well, hey, let's try that. I'm gonna undo that and say, okay, let's just see what happens when I do this. And by staying in the tool and being able to undo it, it it gives you the flexibility to sort of test things out. And actually that looks a lot better. So now when I look at the whole image, like there's no way you could tell that that was there. And again, all I had to do was, you know, go to this tool and click a little bit and it was done. All right, so I'm gonna click done here. And once it finishes processing, I'll show you that it has created, go to our layers panel, so it has this erased image layer. And so it's, it's, it's created its, its own layer there. Now, what that means is, is that basically all these edits from below are burned into this layer. So if, for example, I, I wanna go back to uh, my adjustment layer here where I did the, uh, the glow. Um, also notice when you select a layer that's below, it just automatically turns off the one above it. That's cool because you wanna be able to see which one you're working on. And I'm gonna you know, set the glow to be something really absurd, 1970s uh, Kmart photo booth, okay? Um, when I go back to my layers and I go to my erased image layer, it's gonna be what that was before. So that's why I like doing uh, erasing and clone and stamping at the end. And also uh, when I erased that section, uh, you noticed I clicked the erase button rather than clicking the done button, because if I were to, to want to re-erase um, another section, it would create another erased image layer. In fact, let's do this. There's just a couple of tiny blemishes that I think I'd rather fix with clone and stamp. So I'll click the clone and stamp tool and it's gonna create another uh, erased image layer. We're gonna give that for just a second. Um, click to set the source. I'm gonna say, let's go right here. Make that a little bit smaller. All right, so got rid of that. Um, you can see got a little uh, distance between those two, and that didn't turn out so good. So I'm going to uh, undo, hold Option to create a new source, and basically I'm I'm just sampling pixels that are nearby. That looks better, and now those blemishes are gone. So I can click Done. And of course, you know one of the things I also want to want to uh, get across here is you know we're doing this in a, in a way that is, um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of pausing and, and talking and describing, but, um, you know, honestly, these edits would not take very long to do. And here we have a, a photo that, you know, looks a lot better. And so if we wanted to do a real before and after by clicking the, uh, come back, Zoom tool, um, 
clicking the compare button. Let's see, like, like her eyes look better. They're more dynamic. It's more engaging. Uh, the, the photo is dreamy and you know, we've gotten rid of that, that little, little un annoying spot up at the above, uh, up above. Um, okay. Questions on this one. Uh, yeah, we've, we've got quite a few. Um, okay. So, so one of our uh, contestants uh, asked whether, <laughs> um, whether you could kind of bring her freckles back up a little bit. They were cute and, and kind of uh, they've been a little bit washed out by the effects that you were using. Um, maybe you could comment on, on that. As, uh, and yeah, that's all. You might bring those back if you want. That is a very good question. Um, well, there are a few ways we could do it. Let's see. Um, one possibility would be, and again, th this is one of the one of the the nice things about Luminar. There are often a few different ways of doing things. Um, uh, all right, so uh, I'm just going to think on my feet here. Let's see. I've created a new adjustment layer. Um, what we want to do is is just kind of uh, change the like the, the contrast, right? So if we do smart contrast. Actually, it's going to be a little bit. This is actually a very good question that uh, off the top of my head, I don't know how I would do it. Um, well, if I could just speculate yep. myself, please, um, please, please, uh, from the from the luminar side, um, you know, I might actually go back to the layer in which you apply the effect, and and maybe either change the opacity, or maybe use the erase brush um, to erase the effect. But you know, that might be a too heavy-handed approach. But um, yeah, I, I might try to fiddle with the the uh, the layer that the effect was originally applied to. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, so so then that brings up a couple of good things. Um, one thing is, um, uh, so if, if you notice on the on the layers, um, you have this adjustments amount slider, um, and that is going to. Let's see if I was it this one that kind of ruined this. Okay, so um, these are my portrait edits. If I decided that, you know, wow, th this was just too heavy handed um, or, or, you know, maybe the, the, the glow layer or something was too heavy handed, um, you can adjust how, how much of the effects for, for that entire layer show through up here. So like Kevin said, being able to just kind of maybe back off on that a little bit is really helpful. Um, or uh, the, the other thing that I was thinking of is, you know, maybe uh, uh, having a layer that had a little bit more contrast and then uh, an adjustment layer with, with more contrast and basically just taking a, a, a light, uh, creating a new uh, brush mask and with, with light brush settings, just sort of painting back over there um, not so much that it looks like, you know, she's become a raccoon, but just enough to kind of uh, enhance those, those specific areas. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. A um, yeah. couple other quick questions. Uh -huh. um, one was uh, about uh, wanting to explain the blend modes option uh, for adjustment yes. layers and, and just kind of unpack that a little bit uh, uh, briefly. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, I, I will uh, talk about those a little bit when I when I do an image layer when we, okay. when we pack a couple of, of images together. Okay. Um, Perfect. So I've I've got a couple more then. Um, okay. Uh, one of our uh, attendees wanted to um, uh, ask you about merging all the layers, and you know when would you when would you choose to merge layers, or would you, and uh, mm. and how would you do that if you wanted to. Yeah, um, so, so uh, I don't believe Luminar has a way to merge the layers, but what you could do is, like, let's say you do have a whole bunch of layers and, um, you know, maybe uh, it's, uh, 
because Luminar is basically having to recalculate everything, um, the, you know, to, to make all the layers work together, if you, and I haven't really run into this a lot, but you know, if, if you have a whole bunch of layers, that's a lot of processing that it has to do. So what you might do is, let's see, let's turn on all of our layers here. Uh, what you might do then is create uh, a new stamped layer. And the stamped layer is basically create a version of this that has all the edits burned in, right? And um, so then, so actually the, the, the uh, uh, notification there said that it was merging. So this is basically merging the, the layers, but you still have them all below. And so now if I wanted to, I could actually turn off all these layers or, uh, you know, if, if I got to the point where I was, you know, happy with how it turned out, I could just delete those layers and then maybe use this as the sort of base camp for further edits that I want to do on top of it. Right, right. No, that's a, that's a great technique. Um, speaking of stamped layers, uh, we, had, we had one more question, I think, for this one uh, uh -huh. about... Um, adding a, adding a watermark, you know, how do you, how do you add something ah. like that? And would you add it as an image layer or a stamp layer? Uh, you would add that as an image layer. Um, uh, I actually have that exact example in my book. <laughs> um, so uh, yes, you would add it as an image layer. You would, you would bring that in and uh, you, you, bring in your, your, like, let's say your logo, your watermark, um, you can use, there are transform commands to resize it and place it. And then, um, you know, depending on the nature of it, you could then use uh, blend modes to, to make it blend in or just, just the opacity of that layer to make that uh, blend nicely. So, okay. Um, very quickly, I actually don't know if we had a set, time limit here, but um, I'm just going to assume that not everybody wants to stay here for hours and hours and hours. Um, I want to show one more type of mask. I'm sorry, were there other questions that I needed to uh, to jump on? No, I, I've got a couple okay. more uh, queued up here, but as you said, you're going to cover blend modes. And yeah. we also still had this uh, edge case of layering two photos and seeing them both. Yes. Yeah, so that, that is. Just that, got this. I won't let you forget. <laughs> we can do okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So uh, uh, one other thing that I wanted to bring up about about uh, masks. So so far, I've just shown how to use a brush mask to selectively pinpoint like like where you want effects to show through. Right. Um, there are a couple of other types. There's uh, a radial mask, which lets you um, basically do the same thing, but it creates a circle uh, that's blended from from the middle to the outside and gives you like a nice a nice blended way if I had um, actually before the the portrait tools that would be the way to like uh, you know, bring up the the light in someone's face you would make a radial mask on their face and 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 bring that up it's actually better now in the portrait tools um, and then there's also a gradient mask which uh, you could use, say, for example, to um, apply edits just to, like, let's say, the, the sky or just to the ground. Um, again, there's not a lot of need for that because there are tools that are, are sort of doing that already. Uh, but those are, those are options that you have. Maybe you want you know, something coming in from a, from a diagonal. Um, and then there's also a luminance mask. And a luminance mask, basically, uh, like you don't really do anything except create it. And what a luminance mask does is it looks at your image and it creates a mask based on the brightness values of the entire image. So in this case, uh, this is a photo I took in Hawaii. Um, I've done some edits. The, the hillside there and the foliage looks pretty good but I'm not really happy with the fact that the, the clouds are really kind of blue. Uh, they seem a little bit muted to me. Certainly not like, you know, what I remembered from the day. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I have um, this image layer and actually uh, I'm gonna 
be bad and counter contradicts something that I said. Um, I created an erased image layer here uh, purely out of embarrassment because I had like spots in the sky. So uh, that's something that I would probably deal with later. But for the purposes of this, uh, we're going to pretend that those weren't there. So now I'm going to say edit mask and I'm going to change that to luminosity. And it's basically going to look at everything. And uh, if you'll notice, like it's, it's, it's kind of tiny. Maybe I can zoom in here. Not sure if this is coming through. Um, so we have on the layer, we have a preview of what the, the, the layer looks like. And then we have the mask. And the mask, it kind of looks the same, right? Um, if I were to go into brush just to, get to, just to get the controls, just so I can turn the mask on, make it visible, you can see that the, the, the red areas track to the, the, the whites, and then the darker areas are less red, right? So what does that do for us? That allows us to apply edits just to those light areas. It's going to apply it to everything, but it's going to apply it more to the, to the bright areas. So for example, um, I'm just going to go to my essentials and go to light and I'm going to go under advanced settings and increase my whites a bit. All right. Now, uh, I can actually increase them quite a lot. And uh, I'm going to go into color. I'm going to sort of go to my blues and kind of reduce the saturation of the blue a little bit. Let's see if I can do that here. And right now it does not look like it wants to. There we go. I can, I can do the exposure a bit. So uh, the point here is now what I've done is I've gotten rid of some of the blue. I've increased the whites a bit, but look at the histogram up here. The histogram, uh, we haven't blown out the whites. All right, that's super important for an image like this that has a lot of white to it. If I were to, let's say we, we turn this off and we create a new adjustment layer. And I'm like, oh, this needs to be brighter. So I'm gonna increase the exposure, All right? With no mask, let's see what happens. Like that's just terrible, right? Because what it's doing is it's, it's, it's blasting light through the entire image. And I don't want that. I want the control of being able to just apply it to the white areas. And so that's, that's what the luminance mask does for us here. Um, it would let us just adjust, <laughs> just adjust, sorry. Um, it, it would let us just affect the images, the, sorry, the areas that are white. This is really good for like waterfalls um, or let's say, uh, the problem here was was the the foliage, right? Like I only wanted to edit the foliage area and not the whites and protect the whites. Um, then what I could do is I could go into into my uh, apply my luminance mask, go into the brush edit, and then invert that mask. And what that would do, let's, we'll just turn that on. And if I invert it, then the the areas that are most affected are these areas here. Just leave that there. Hey, Jeff, uh, if I can just jump in, there was a question yep. that was really pertinent to where you are right now. Yeah. Um, one of our attendees asked, can you edit the mask made by the luminosity mask? I mean, you just showed uh, inverting, but uh, you know, I think he's asking for something a little deeper. You can, yeah. Yeah. So, so okay. basically um, the, the, the brush tool is, is kind of the way to jump into that. Um, let's say, for example, I'm going to invert it back to where it was. And let's say, um, you know, I, I want to, uh, you know, protect this area, right? So <laughs> it's going to, 
it's giving me that that same little glitch again. But yeah, basically, I could brush this area here and make it less white, and therefore um, less uh, affected by the edits. Anything else before we jump ahead? Um, no, I think that's, uh, are you gonna stick with this image or move on? I, I'm, I'm gonna move on, sorry. Uh, okay, well, I did have one question that might actually apply to this one. Um, okay. Tangentially, uh, we had one question about, you know, can you demonstrate how you would address blown out areas on an image? So nothing there is truly blown out. I mean, I have to look at the histogram. Um, yeah. But just in general, can you can you share a technique or two about how to recover uh, blown out areas? Yeah, yeah. So just in general, um, uh, probably the best way to do that would be to um, uh, use your the 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 highlight slider in the uh, essentials. So you, you go to essentials and under light um, highlights, and we'll see if that affects it with our with our mask on or not. Um, that tends to do a lot of work uh, for blown out areas. Um, if you're using, if you're editing a raw image, you'll have a lot more success because there's just a lot more data there, uh, excuse me, that, that can um, be pulled out of those areas. If it's truly blown out, I mean, if, if, if those pixels are just white, there's really not much you can do about it. Um, another thing that you could try uh, and this touches on what we're going to get on next is, um, you know, if you have um, uh, like a darker image of that uh, same shot, like a darker version of that same shot, um, you could uh, basically, well, actually, let's just jump right into it because that is one of the things that I'm going to show for the next one. It's going to leave you hanging in there. Sorry. Okay. So looking at this image, uh, this was a challenging image to shoot because it was really bright in some areas, really dark in other areas. Now there are things that, that I could have done with this. Um, like I said, like actually just to show that real quick, this is just the base layer. Um, this is just a JPEG here, but if I were to bring the, the highlights down, you'll notice this area up here, like it wasn't blown out, but it was, it was pretty bright. Um, the highlights is, is really just going to affect those those bright areas. Um, I also like working with the the white slider often we'll we'll do that. Um, so you know that that kind of helps. but at the same time, um, you know the the water isn't as smooth as I would like. It's not really accentuated. I have another image uh, that I also shot. Um, I was actually bracketing on this day uh, that's better, but it's definitely too bright. Well, what if we do this? So we're gonna go to our layers panel and we're gonna say add new image layer. And make sure I'm grabbing the right one. Okay, now this is my, my brighter image. I like the fact that the, the water looks a lot better. Uh, the, the rocks are a little bit better. This is way too bright, but okay, we'll kind of work with that. Um, and what we have here in our layers, we've got uh, this image and it's basically overlaying the, the image below it. Um, one possibility is we could change the opacity of this image. So now we're, we're blending those two in a way that, you know, uh, kind of, you know, meets in the middle. Uh, it's not exactly what I'm going for. Um, we could change the blend mode. And the blend mode is how the, 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 the pixels interact between layers. And I, I will admit, and I say this in the book too, um, you know, there are some people who like blend modes just click. Uh, I am not one of those. I know what they do in concept, but I can never remember like, okay, well, is this the one that I want to do for this situation? But the great thing is, you know, you can just, test it and see. So for example, uh, like I might want to say darken. So if I darken this or maybe multiply, um, what it's doing is it's, it, it, it's giving preference to darker colors and or darker tones and lighter tones. Um, one of the examples that I have in the book 
uh, is I, there's a, a uh, in chapter four, there's a, a, a portrait and uh, the, the foreground, I, I worked on this a little bit in the previous webinar, uh, the foreground, the, there's a, a woman and it, she's really, really dark um, and in dark in shadow. And so, you know, there are things I could have done. I could have uh, maybe made a mask. I could have, you know, brought up the shadows in a, in a dramatic way. But um, I found by uh, just duplicating uh, the, the layer, and setting a blend mode to screen or lighten, that just brought things up without having to really mess about a whole lot. So, um, you know, the, the blend modes uh, can be very powerful, especially if you know what you're doing or if you just, you know, wanna play around, right? Um, so in this case, I am just gonna leave that as normal. Um, and now I'm going to take the best parts of each one of these. So in this case, I'm going to go to my brush mask and this is going to be kind of crude and let's hope that it sticks with me. Nope, it's not. <laughs> All right. What will happen uh, is, go to my brush, there we go. And what I'm doing now is I'm painting basically the, the, the portion of the brighter image, which is the, the top layer. I'm just painting that to expose the sections that I want. So I like the fact that the bottom uh, image is still, you know, uh, dark enough that, that none of this is blown out. And perhaps I want to change my opacity here and maybe, you know, bring up a little bit of shadow over here in the, in the sides. And I can do that because I have those, those two things layered on top of each other. Okay. Did I cover the image layers and, and that sufficiently? And, and, and then I have one quick thing to mention. Yeah, look good to me. Uh, nobody's, oh. nobody's piping up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> excellent. Um, so, so there's one other thing about Luminar that uh, will either blow your mind or make you go, uh, I'm not even gonna, gonna bother with that. And that is, so everything that I've showed you so far has been creating masks on, uh, on layers, right? So I, I mask a layer so that every edit that I make on that layer shows through in a certain area, all right? But let's say, let me make a new adjustment layer just because I can. The other crazy thing about Luminar, and, I, I'm, and I, I say crazy in a good way, is that almost every tool can also have its own mask. So let's say in this case, I want to uh, really kind of increase the, the, or Im improve the color of this whiskey, right? So I'm gonna go to the color, uh, the color panel, and I'm gonna just kind of make it a little more orange, right? Now, as before, this is affecting the entire image, but that's okay. Like, like that seems a little more, a little more golden, a little more delicious. And I can go to the edit mask button just in that tool. And I'm gonna do a brush mask again, and see if this is gonna work. There we go. And just paint that area. So then this, this mask applies only to this specific tool. And you can see a little preview of, of what that mask looks like. I'm gonna say done. And so any other edits that I make, even if, if um, you know, I'm still on this same layer, uh, I can do that and have them apply 
to the entire image. So again, like it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, there isn't like a, a hard and fast rule over why you would want to use a mask uh, just in a tool versus on a layer, other than the ability to be more uh, precise about the edits that you're making. So that's what I've got. What other questions do we have? Well, I just want to make a little editorial comment from the peanut oh, please. gallery here. That is probably my number one favorite feature in Luminar uh, coming from the team here, that ability to apply a mask that's specific to a, a tool is, is to me a, a game changer. And uh, I'll also add that even though we've been talking about a lot of layers here, you know, you can almost use these individual masks as many layers, right? Uh, or some, yeah. you know, some micro layers on, uh, on, a, on an adjustment layer. Um, as far as questions go, uh, Jeff, you know, I think you've covered most, uh, most everything here. You know, we still had that, um, that uh, question hanging out about uh, layering two photos and seeing both of them, but I think you covered that uh, oh, it, it, um, with the waterfall uh, in, in a sense. Uh, yes. Um, for the person who asked, uh, do you mean being able to see them both at the same time rather than, than stack? Yeah, that's the sense I got from the, from oh, okay. the question. Oh, okay. Yes, that, that, that's actually a really good um, question. I can answer that quickly because um, we have this uh, layer transform command. And what that does is that lets you do all sorts of things like, let well, because I have a mask on the layer, this is gonna be a little bit, a little bit wonkified. But, um, you know, let's say, let's say I wanna do, actually I will show you a, uh, a, a funny yet terrible example, if I can find it. Um, go to my images here. Ah, here we go. So let's say you wanted to composite some photos together. Now, I am not advocating Luminar as a compositing tool, but and especially not in a crude, terrible way like this, uh, but you can do it. Or you could, for example, um, where's that other picture? Like this, right? Now, uh, again, like this is not superior composition, but if it's something quick and dirty like this that you wanted to share for somebody's friend, you could absolutely do it. Or you could, uh, let's say you have, um, you know, five different images that you want to stack in a pyramid or, you know, six images. You want to have like, like a grid of images in the same, same one. What you would do is you would add an image later, <laughs> add an image layer, excuse me, um, use the layer transform tools to resize it, put it into place, and then add another image layer and sort of build your composition there. I've been really sort of focusing on like how do you fix a you know a single um, single image and, and and improve it, but you do have that sort of uh, that sort of flexibility too, and you know just a sort of uh, perk for um, new features. As soon as this goes in, um, if you haven't tried the AI augmented sky feature. Uh, you know, it's, th th this definitely counts in the, like, I'm going to do creative things here and, and not try to represent what was, you know, the reality of the moment and people can get real crazy about that. Um, but, you know, let's say I want to add a plane. Oh, it's down there. Right. Now, Technically, what this tool is basically doing is creating a layer inside. Um, it's, it's not a layer that you can access other than within the tool, but it's the same kind of idea. So, yeah. Um, what other, what other uh, uh, questions do we have? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we had a couple of them. Um, okay. So 
one uh, one of our attendees asked if you can use masks to apply to areas with looks which is a really interesting concept if that i'm if i'm really interpreting that right uh so uh i i guess uh you know ma mask an area and apply a look to just that area um uh, yeah. So, so okay. well, um, as, as a quick example, um, now that I'm, you know, uh, disrupting this, this image. Yeah, you, really you, you're riffing, you're riffing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, it. Well, okay. So, so let's take this, um, let's just make this a stamped layer and do, 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 do. Luminar is like, wait, you want me to do what? I think it's probably also because I think this is a large file. Okay, uh, I'm gonna turn on my Luminar looks. I'm gonna go to, oh, I didn't mean for this to be a salesy thing. Let me get myself out of the way. Do I have it? Uh, look, there's a Rocky Nook looks collection. If you buy the book, you will find out how you can download those for free. Hmm. Um, like I said, didn't mean for that to be a little sales pitch, but there we go. All right. So let's say we're going to apply this black and white film effect. Uh, because this is on the layer, we can, I'm just going to do a gradient mask and see what happens. So yes. Um, because what a look does, what a luminar look does is um, basically has a whole bunch of preset controls, uh, preset edits. And so you can just create a mask on the layer that the look is on in order to isolate the effect just to one area of the image. So, yes. What else? Hey, that, hey that's, that's very cool. Um, let me just see. And then, and this, this is just in general, it's not necessarily related to masks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, somebody was uh, asking about how large a file, you know, once you've stacked up a few layers like this, how, how large a file would it be, you know, mm. in general, if it's saved? Is it comparable to a Photoshop file? Less, so, more? It's so a, that's a really interesting question because um, there isn't a real good comparison with that and and this is why um so luminar uh luminar 4 um it's not working like as a separate file so so, so like like this i'm not explaining well uh basically because luminar is non-destructive um this original image file is not being touched at all and so luminar is keeping track of all the edits that i make and those are essentially, I mean, other than, um, uh, well, hang on, I'll, I'll get to stamp layers in a minute. Um, other than, uh, you know, the, 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 the size of the file itself, all these edits are basically just like little text instructions that say, uh, you know, on this layer, exposure is 47 and uh, temperature is, you know, 4200 or whatever. Um, and so as, as long as you're working within Luminar, uh, there's no real size difference because that's just adding to Luminar's catalog and, and how it's thinking about it. Um, and then when you want to do something else with the photo, then you would um, export it as a JPEG or a, a, a PSD or something like that. So um, that's a long way of saying, um, <laughs> it's a long way of saying like, if I were to, to say this as a PSD, um, it's not, uh, Luminar doesn't, doesn't track all the edits and layers in the same way that Photoshop does. And so um, I don't, I don't actually know how the size comparison would be, but it would be the size comparison of what you have exported out. Now, if you are, um, if you're in Photoshop and you're using Luminar as a plugin, so you can be editing in Photoshop and say, there are things in Luminar uh, that I want to do to this photo that only Luminar can do. Uh, 
you can basically send that out to Luminar. And what Photoshop does is it creates a, um, a high resolution TIFF file. Um, and so that's going to be a large file because it's, it's um, uh, I, I believe it's either lossless or um, uh, close to being lossless in terms of compression. And so you will end up with, with a big file. That was probably much more than you were <laughs> anticipating uh, as the answer, but it's the way the, the, the way it works under the hood, that's why it was a little more complicated. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, one, uh, one other question here uh, yeah. from an attendee. And uh, so uh, Richard's asking, can you use layers to get around the absence of virtual copies? Mm. Which is a great question. It is a great question. So, so for people who aren't familiar, uh, virtual copies is a feature in um, some of the programs where you would uh, just say, like, as, as I did earlier, like you want to take something in a new direction, or you want to uh, make a um, a completely different version of an image, uh, and and what virtual copies do, they they actually create like. It, it looks like you're working on a separate image. Uh, so the answer would be yes. You could use layers to say, all right, I'm going to make this my grungy black and white version of this photo, or I'm going to make this the uh, super, you know, 1980s day glow neon kind of uh, version of this photo. Uh, you can't like see them side by side in your library what you would end up doing is, is basically having to open that up and then uh, activate or deactivate the different layers that you want. But that also then gives you the ability to say, okay, now I want to export the 1980s version. So you turn on that layer, export that as a JPEG or whatever, um, and then turn off the, the 80s layer and uh, turn on the black and white grungy layer and export that as a separate thing for you know sharing on social media or, or whatever. Um, what you can also do, uh, and we're not really getting into to library stuff here, is um, if you don't mind having extra copies on your hard drive, um, you can actually say, uh, you know, like like specify a separate folder for uh, your your images. Actually, I, I did that for this for this webinar. Um, so so I have these source folders here, and I just created one for webinar photos. Right, um, these also exist in uh, the various like portraits folders and and different. Uh, folders where, where the actual images live. And I knew, like, for example, that I wanted to work on this image. So what I did was um, I uh, pressed Command R, or you can go to, I want to say, Library, Show in Finder, or uh, Show in, in Explorer, um, reveal that photo, made a copy of it, put it in this other folder called Webinar Photos. And that arrived with with no edits because it's it's just the raw image, and then copied the adjustments from the first version to this version, and then started working from there. So you know it's it's a little kludgy, but uh, you know it's not like it's going to take you know gigabytes and gigabytes of storage unless you just really need to duplicate everything. So yeah, short version, you can, you can use uh, layers to give you kind of that, that virtual, um, uh, virtual copy effect, or you can actually just make an actual other copy, copy the adjustments uh, from one image to another. And because Luminar does a really good job of just picking up what images are in each folder, um, you can even you know, just add it in the finder to that, to that folder, excuse me, um, and when you come back to Luminar, it'll be there in, right here in your library. That's a great point. It, 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 it's kind of like a watch folder. So any yeah. changes that happen to that folder, whether you rename it in the, in the Finder or the uh, Internet Explorer or um, you know, your Windows Explorer, uh, it's changed immediately. Um, and I think, uh, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that also works for like cloud-based drives too. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you want to, you want to store your stuff in a in a Dropbox folder, uh, 
um, you can absolutely do that. Uh, yeah. You don't want your your Luminar catalog in a Dropbox folder because Dropbox does some weird things in the background. You can get things out of sync. But as, as long as you have your originals there, or if you notice, like I have a folder here called Luminar NAS. Uh, I have a network, attack, a network attached storage device where I store a bunch of photos. And, you know, as, as long as I am connected to it, uh, those show up just like that. And like I have this Luminar external SSD. Um, right now that SSD is, is not connected. So, um, you know, I, I can't work with the photos because it's not actually there. But as soon as I connected it, they would pop up. Okay, um, last thing to mention, um, uh, the sample files for chapters three and four. Uh, we had a lot of people ask if they could download those images. The chapters three and four are walkthroughs where I go through the steps of taking a landscape photo from uh, start to finish and two portrait photos from start to finish. And uh, people wanted to be able to just like do those steps themselves. So um, that wasn't originally the plan, but uh, you know, a lot of people wanted this to happen. So I got the right permissions. And um, if you go, if, if you look at the ebook now, um, if you just bought it in the front matter, uh, there's a section called how to read this book. Uh, the link is there. Um, if you uh, ordered a print book, actually nobody has a print book yet. Sorry, they're coming very soon, I promise. Um, uh, you can email Rocky Nook or email me and uh, we can tell you where to find it. Um, if you bought an ebook, uh, let me see if I get this right. Previously, like, like when it first came out, you can re-download uh, from your account page at Rocky Nook and I believe uh, Amazon and Apple, uh, they will probably show that, that, that there's an update for that book that you can download. So um, yeah, have at it. Um, and as uh, Mercedes said, um, there are discounts and uh, I think that's it. Any, anything else? I, you know, I think, I think that is it. And I think I set this webinar for an hour and a half, which we are rapidly approaching. My house hey, look at that. flies when, when we're having fun. Uh, so I, I think we're, we should probably stop taking the questions. If anyone else has more <laughs> questions, email, you know, Kevin, me or, or Jeff with whatever your questions were. Um, specifically, if you have any customer service questions um, about your purchase of the book and not about Luminar, um, then go ahead and email me. Uh, I'm with Rocky Nook. Kevin joined us from Luminar to help answer your questions in the chat. And uh, Jeff is a free agent, author, photographer, Luminar extraordinaire. Um, and thank you so much, Jeff, for putting this together for us today. Oh, thank really you helpful. for having me and hosting this. I, I think this worked pretty well. Yeah, this was really great. So I just want to take a minute and thank all the participants who came and who hung out with us for an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> I hope everyone learned something. It seems like a lot of people did. A lot of people seem very, very happy and pleased with, with the outcome of this. And, and I know I am too. So thank Good. you, Jeff and Kevin, for answering all our questions. Is, is there anything you want to say before we, you know, click the end button and release everyone back into the <laughs> Just that, just that, you know, uh, as if, if you stuck with through the whole thing, thank you very much. Um, you can see that, that, that there's a lot of, uh, power and complexity in Luminar to do a lot of this stuff um, that isn't necessarily surfaced. And I think that's, that's good because uh, I'm sure we all know various software where you open it up and you're just like overwhelmed. And, uh, you know, I mean, how many people have Photoshop and they use, you know, 1% of it, um, you know, <laughs> or even less exactly. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, uh, it will look like Luminar, you know, is, is like super like AI stuff and you can one click and one slider, like it will do all that. But if you really want to, you know, put in a little bit of time uh, and read my book because I go into it in depth, um, you know, you can do a lot of powerful things with it. And that's just one of the things that I think are, is really cool about it. Cool. Yeah, great, great, uh, great note there, uh, Jeff. I think from my end, um, you know, we did exactly that. We've tried to design Luminar to be sort of one click or one slider easy. Uh, 
uh, very fast to achieve a result if that's where you're at. But for folks who want to kind of lean into the depths of the of the software, that's where a, a book like yours can really, uh, you know, give them all the detail that's that, that's needed. You know, we're not trying to do everything under the sun uh, and be the Swiss Army knife of of photo editing, but uh, just just the right amount. <laughs> uh, but I, I on a personal note, I, I've really enjoyed being in the background here. Um, you know, answered, you know, almost 50 questions in the background. Oh, excellent. Thank you. And, and so it's been really fun to be able to interact in that, you know, in that vein. Uh, so, you know, thanks for being Luminar fans, folks, and, uh, and you know, being a part of this webinar. Yep. Thanks for being Rocky Nook fans, too. And thanks for coming. I appreciate, the, you know, taking your time to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks to everyone for showing up. And I'll just remind you that Tomorrow you will be sent an email with a link to watch this presentation again if there's something you missed or you want to go back and see something that'll be in that email for you tomorrow. And uh, same with the coupon code, which is Luminar40, no spaces, um, no caps. You can use that at rockynook.com and you can save 40% on Jeff's book. And that's, that's it for us. If I don't cut us off, Zoom will. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, guys.